All right, good afternoon. For those that don't know me, my name is Melinda Peters. I'm the administrator for Maryland State Highway Administration. And I wanna thank you all for taking time to come and join us uh, for this very important event today on a very important project uh, for the entire state and especially for this community. Today, we break ground on a new interchange right here behind me, a project that I know all of you have worked very hard to get us to this point. But before we get started, I just wanna introduce some of the dignitaries that we have here and acknowledge the fact that they've taken time to join us, some of whom you'll hear from in a moment. Uh, first, we have our Transportation Secretary, Jim Smith. We have De Deputy Secretary, Wilson Perrin. Senator Stephen Hershey. Delegate Stephen Arnaz. Delegate Jay Jacobs. And on behalf of the Comptroller, uh, Peter Frantro, we have Chief of Staff, Len Foxwell. On behalf of the Treasurer, Nancy Kopp, we have the Deputy Treasurer of Public Policy, Suzanne Brogan. And for Senator Mikulski, uh, we have Linda Prohaska, uh, and as far as the federal offices. On behalf of Senator Ben Cardin, we have our Eastern Shore Field Representative, Kimberly Crowdeville. And then we have our Queen Anne's County Commissioners. We have our President, Phil Domville, uh, Domel, sorry, spelling issues here. As well as our other County Commissioners, David Dunmeyer, James Moran, Bob Simmons and Dave Olds. We have our Centerville County Council President, George Smokey Singler. We have our Council County Council Vice President, a little bit of traffic there, Timothy Mikulski. And I'm, it's my pleasure to have a group of women who have worked so hard for so long to get us to this point. Barb Burkhart, Nikki Pino, Jennifer Fitzmorris, Lindsay Rex, I'm always going to say this last name wrong, Rextus, and the entire team of people that have really worked so hard for the students overpass, the support students overpass. But I also understand we have the entire track team here with us today, and it's a pleasure to have them run down and join us on this beautiful weather. Uh, we also have uh, a man who's very important here on the shore, Greg Halsey, our district engineer for the area. So the fact is, we're here today to celebrate, and I'm really happy to finally be here to do this because I know it's been long awaited and really was made possible by the Transportation Infrastructure Investment Act. So a man that knows how to deliver and get projects done, it's my pleasure to welcome the Maryland Transportation Secretary, Jim Smith. Thank you, Melinda, and uh, thank you for your leadership of the State Highway Administration. I thank Greg for uh, his uh, great rapport with the communities that we serve, uh, and it's really a pleasure to be here this afternoon. Um, you know, during these types of events, it's usually I come up here and I thank everybody for joining us for our groundbreaking event. Well, today is a, is a little different. I want to thank all of you for allowing us to join you in your celebration for your groundbreaking event because you are the ones that made it happen. I want to, I really want to thank all of the elected officials and members of this very tight-knit community and to all the students and citizens of Queen Anne's County who joined together to form a tremendously successful advocacy group, Support Overpass for Students. You made a difference and congratulations to you. I mean, you, you really, your voices were heard and they were heard by the governor, the lieutenant governor, the comptroller, the treasurer, and by the Department of Transportation. And you needed all those folks to make this thing happen. And it, it was your mission, and I quote, I believe from your website, to honor those whose lives have been taken and changed forever at this intersection. Well, your mission 
ladies and students has been fulfilled and it will it's a very exciting time for all of us you know the transportation infrastructure investment act as, as melinda alluded to made additional revenue and funding available but it was your advocacy that really got the attention of the leadership of our great state and that's how they committed 50 million dollars to make your dream which is a dream for everybody it wasn't personal it was personal but it wasn't just for one person it was for this entire community in fact it was for this entire area this is a safety project yes it is a project that also allows for the flow of traffic unimpeded but it is a safety project and you know 301 carries right now about 22,000 vehicles a day that's supposed to grow to 32,000 by 2030 25% of those vehicles are trucks so what is happening today is we together are making this intersection and this area safe for the people who live here and safe for the people who who use this ro these roadways and we are doing it for generations yet to come so congratulations to everybody everybody involved in this project it also is going to include installing shoulders along the overpass for bicyclists and a 25 uh, space park and ride for commuters another little side note to this is uh, there's another eastern shore advantage to this project it was all done according to the rules of procurement but contract eastern shore contractor david bramble won the award for this contract so eastern shore residents are not only going to be involved in making it happen they're going to be involved in executing the plan because it's an eastern shore contractor that is going to be doing the work You know we've got we've got a lot of work yet to do so we ex we we appreciate your patience i mean it's going to take a while like a couple years to get this uh intersection uh overpass completed so stay with us but you're going to see improvements on a weekly basis uh and i i, I also want to thank and i i have thanked them but i want to specifically thank the elected officials uh, and, 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 and the uh, commissioners uh, from Queen Anne's County because they made this their number one priority. And that makes a difference because when you're looking around the state to do projects, it, what the elected local officials believe is in the best interest of the people that they're responsible for, that makes a difference. So again, I, I thank them for also making this their number one priority. I'm also very, very grateful to the leadership of Senator, uh, Senator, Senators Mikulski <clears throat> and Cardin and Maryland's entire congressional delegation for their efforts because through their efforts, we secured $8.2 million in federal funds to go toward this interchange. I thank Comptroller Peter Francho and Treasurer Nancy Kopp for their ongoing support of transportation investments. They are really attuned to the difference that transportation makes to communities and to people and to the economy. Bottom line, however, thanks go out to the students from Queen Anne's High School who turned heartbreak into hope following the tragic death of their friend and classmate, Connor Rice. In closing, I know that when the governor signed the Transportation Act into law in May of 2013, providing construction funding for this project, Barb Burkhart, Jennifer Fitzmaurice, Nikki Pino, Lindsay Rextus, and Charlie Rextus handed him a small groundbreaking shovel to remind him constantly 
of, the, of his commitment to make this project happen. And although the, the, the governor deeply regrets his inability to be here today, he wanted me to let you know that he is a man of his word, and he asked me to present to you these groundbreaking shovels that are up, uh, they don't, they pale next to these shovels, let me tell you. But they're from his uh, sentiment in any event, uh, so that in thanks and appreciation for your advocacy and determination to make this project happy, happen. So I'd like those, those folks to come up, I'll give you the shovel and then we hope you'll make some comments. Secretary Smith, it is my pleasure now to introduce our next speaker. Uh, these, these ladies worked so hard and tirelessly as part of the Support Overpass for Students initiative. From their Facebook page to their testimony in Annapolis to attending the bill signing as was just noted. Uh, and the fact is it was always with professionalism and with a reminder of the end in mind. Uh, it was a pleasure. I know our design team that is here today had a, was a pleasure for them to work with you all throughout pushing this project forward. And so it's a pleasure for me to introduce Jen Fitzmorris, who's going to talk uh, for the group. Jen. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming out. On a bittersweet day, but we're glad to see everyone gathered in our little corner of the world to celebrate today, but also to remember. This corner is traveled by so many along a major U.S. highway and a state route, but it's really a country road our children take to school <clears throat> each day. An overpass here has been long overdue, so this day is marked with emotions. Accomplishment through grief, joy blended in sadness, yet hope made from memories. Three years ago, Barb, Nikki, and I came together and committed to make a change by securing funding and letting our government know that we wouldn't back down until the children in our community could safely get to school, our commuters to work, and our loved ones home. With the help of several phenomenal student leaders, the support of the entire community, the cooperation of Queen Anne's County Schools and its administrator, Dr. Williamson, we are now able to stand here today as that vision becomes a reality. We need to thank Comptroller Francho and his staff for immediately recognizing the impact this intersection has on all of us. Madam Treasurer Kopp for spending so much time with us and learning about the people in our community and supporting our cause. And our governor for designating the funds for our overpass here. Thank you also to the many unsung heroes that have served to make a difference and pave the way. Melinda Peters, Lindsay Bobian, and the entire SHA staff. Transportation Secretary Jim Smith our own David Blyden, and many others in Queen Anne's County public offices, our commissioners, emergency services personnel, and their staffs that supported us and helped us each step of the way. We'd ask for you to please share in a moment of silence, as it's very important to all of us that the many lives lost and impacted here remembered in our own little corner of the world. Thank you. The relationships that have been built demonstrate the importance of coming together in and with government for the citizens of our community. We hope they continue with and for the children whose voices were such a crucial part of this project. Thank you all for your attendance today and your steadfast support. Thank you, Jen. I very much appreciate that. It's now uh, my pleasure to introduce a student leader as part of the group, Lindsay Rectus, who was the president of the Queen Anne's High School class of 2012 and a member of the group. Lindsay? 
Well, good afternoon. It's beautiful September afternoon. Um, I was lucky enough to be chosen as the student representative for the Support Overpass for Students organization, and I cannot tell you how humbled I am to be here today. Everybody who's helped over the past three years, including our county commissioners, Ms. Barb Burkhard, Ms. Jen Fitzmaurice, and Ms. Nikki Pino, unbelievable people who have made this a reality. But coming from a student's point of view, I got to be the voice of the students at Queen Anne's County High School. They, on the morning of September 19th, they lost a fellow classmate and a friend. People lost family and for a while they lost hope but because of the support overpass for students organization this was changed into positive and is why we're here today connor rice was a beautiful happy amazing young man the day of his accident i saw the heartbreak spread across the school my fellow classmates lost a friend but he had already changed their lives forever. Their lives were changed that morning and I think that although it was something that should never have to happen to anybody else, it's the reason we're here fighting today and their fight means something. And that's what this overpass represents. It represents that we can make a difference in the community. As students, we, meet, we matter. And Connor Rice, his family, his community, and his fellows, fellow classmates made a difference. The entire process of working with SO4S has been an unbelievable one. I'm thrilled to have been a part of it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lindsay. It's now my pleasure, and please join me in welcoming Len Foxwell, Chief of Staff for Comptroller Peter Francho. Len? <laughs> Thank you, Melinda, for that introduction. I have to say that uh, Comptroller Francho and his office has had the privilege of working with Melinda Peters on a broad range of projects and contracts through the years. And I can attest standing here today that there is not a more responsive public servant in this entire state. And I don't believe there's a more effective transportation administrator anywhere in this region, if not the country, than Melinda Peters. And please. If Melinda's at the helm, we can, we can rest assured here today that this project is going to be built on time, it's going to be completed on budget, and it's going to be done right. No pressure. No pressure. We've laid the marker down. It is truly an honor to be here this afternoon on behalf of Comptroller Francho. He truly wanted to be here this afternoon because this project means so much to him and because he will never ever forget the, the way in which this community came together in the face of such terrible tragedy to speak with such force and with such clarity in support of this life-changing intersection. And while an unavoidable scheduling conflict has made it impossible for him to be here today, he did ask me on his behalf to salute the leadership of Governor O'Malley and of you, Secretary Smith. Both of you took the time to listen to this community in the aftermath of the heartbreaking occurrences of three years ago, to understand what was at stake, and for understanding that in a time when our unsatisfied transportation needs far exceed our available resources, those projects that protect our communities and safeguard our loved ones move to the front of the list every time. So thank you. And finally, ab above all else, he adds, asked me to extend a heartfelt thanks to each of you. Jen Fitzmorris, Lindsay Rextus, Nikki Pino, Bob Burkhart, who fought so hard, who sacrificed so many weeknights and weekends and holidays in pursuit of the cause, who lived off adrenaline and coffee for so long, and who never ever took your eye off the ultimate goal of getting this interchange funded and built. Thanks to all of you. 
Each of you knew all too well what this project means to those you love and care about, and each of you had seen firsthand the consequences of failure and inaction. And in your own way, each and every one of you have reminded us through your hard work and through your spirit of partnership that in this state, the very worst of times can bring out the very best in Marylanders. And each, of, each and every one of you have made a consequence and have changed your community forever for the good. Once again, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. Thank you very much, Len. It's now my privilege to introduce Senator Hershey, who's worked tirelessly in this region to help get projects delivered. Senator Hershey. <clears throat> Thank you very much. And certainly on behalf of my delegation, Senator, I mean, uh, Delegate Jacobs, Delegate Ahrens, Delegate Schmeagel, who couldn't be with us today, I'd also like to thank Secretary Smith and the wonderful staff and group of workers that you have working for you and most importantly working for our community. They've done an outstanding job and have been there every step of the way while we've gone through this project. You know, I'd like to, to remember, I think it was the first meeting when, when uh, Jen and Nikki and Barb came into our office and told us about what they wanted to do out here with a new overpass. And um, I think our respo response was, you know, public works projects like this are like turning around an aircraft carrier. They're not very simple at all. Um, but I think if, if they focused on um, priorities and safety rather than politics and revenue that they're gonna have a great chance to do this. What I didn't expect was the dedication and commitment of these women and most importantly the students that they got to back them and be with them every step of the way in advocating for this project. Today is certainly a proud day for our community and even a prouder day for the support overpass for students this advocacy group certainly showed what dedication and hard work can do and what they can bring towards the community. So I thank you very much. And last but certainly not least, it's my privilege to introduce the Queen Anne County Commission President. We know the hard work the county commissioners have um, in working with their citizens to get projects delivered. And so with that, I'd like to introduce Council President Philip Dumavel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Senator, you thought I uh, didn't have anything prepared. This overpass will make access to Centerville, the middle school, Queen Anne's County High School, for our students and parents, a safer cross. What has brought us all here today was a very sad fall day three years ago when we lost a young man who had his whole life ahead of him. It was on that day and the days to follow that a community rallied together, young and old alike, to say enough is enough. We will not stand idle while the members of our community and our young drivers are at risk every time they approach this crossover. This overpass is a great example of state level government listening to the concerns of local citizens. Perhaps even more impressive was the grassroots efforts that were launched the weeks that followed the tragic loss of Connor Rice. Support overpass for students became an effort that everyone wanted to be part of. Support overpass for students also became a household term here in our county and because of the efforts of three amazing ladies became a phrase well known in the halls of the Miller and Bush buildings in Annapolis. These three amazing women share a large portion of the credit for this project that has moved from being just an idea to becoming reality. I would be remiss if I did not give some credit to the 36th district delegation. Senator Hershey, Delegate Jacobs, Delegate Schmeagel, who couldn't be here with us today, and our very own Delegate Steve Ahrens for their help in Annapolis. I would also like to thank the Governor, Martin O'Malley, for recognizing the overpass is essential to improve safety for our students and our community. This has been a long time coming, and we're grateful community. To the folks of Maryland State Highway Administration, thank you very much 
from the bottom of our hearts. So what we've really been waiting for, and we'll start, I'd like to start, we're gonna get this started with actual breaking ground. I'd like to invite our speakers and our group of folks here with some special shovels to join me up here. And then from that, we'll have a whole series of additional efforts to break ground uh, here to celebrate the start of this project. I also just wanna note one thing, there is a cooler with water. I know we've been out here in the heat, so feel free to help yourself to some water. <laughs> Are we throwing it at him? <laughs> Okay, you all done with your pictures? Yeah. Okay, let's do the countdown then. Five, four, 